<clears throat> living in the Scotland and uh, in 90 in the year 2001 I came to Newcastle where I undertook fine art BA In that time, I was exploring the medium of painting, but I have slowly uh, discovered that uh, I need to be experimenting with other techniques, and the closest one to me was printmaking, as my father did a lot of printmaking. It felt very free uh, to study in the United Kingdom. The education was very different from the Czech Republic. I was very, uh, I was encouraged very strongly to be experimenting with different media and supported to to visit different departments and to collaborate with other students and that's when I started to experiment a little bit with film in 2005 I moved to London as I was accepted to attend the Royal College of Art, the MA course, which I thought is fantastic uh, opportunity. And uh, it was uh, the place, London, that uh, attracted me the most. The diversity um, in culture, and <clears throat> and uh, people. In my final year at the Royal College of Art, by chance I came across in the university library, I came across this book called Traditional Folklore Costume of Czechoslovakia. And as I read, it said, There are over 365 different folk costumes across, across former Czechoslovakia. And different costumes, different regions has its own costumes. These costumes have different motifs, colors, Every single detail counts. Every single detail tells story about the person wearing that costume. It says, I am married, I am single, or I'm getting married. I've become fascinated by the complexity of those costumes. And the sentence that struck me the most was that this costume does not serve only the aesthetic function, 
but also magical, healing, and erotic function. <coughs> and I suddenly realized that I have discovered something quite uh, quite magical and quite interesting to to explore in more detail in more depth I met Zoe Simon at the live drawing classes at the Royal College of Art, as I was always interested <clears throat> in drawing the life figure. And I thought that the, the way Zoe works is very unique and strong. I've asked Zoe if she would be interested working with me. And from that moment, Zoe has been the main performer in my work. And in some ways, my alter ego. This image is called the wedding day. And uh, this was a kind of installation using uh, Zoe's body and cut out cardboard to create this uh, image of a bride that uh, that I felt has a very powerful story to tell. This is an image 
of a bride from a village, a bride on her wedding day with her family. Most regions, the bride would be wearing a decorated piece of fabric that would be coming across her arms. That same fabric would one day wrap her child. As I've said, different region has its own specific tradition and ritual. This is a tree of life used in a village on a wedding day, placed on a table of the bride and the groom. It's a symbol of life. of commitment. On the wedding day, it said, the closest friends of the bride has to go to her courtyard. They have to dig a hole, and they have to plant a tree. That tree has to be decorated with ribbons. This act was made to bring prosperity and good luck for the bride's life.
I read that on the day of the wedding, the bride's headdress was extremely important, extremely difficult to make. And often the bride had to be sat behind a table for several days until the garment has been completed. This is an image of a bride getting ready for her big day in Moravia, in Czech Republic. I'm very much fascinated by the whole process. The bride comes with very much plainer clothing and more elaborate and complex garment which takes long time is placed on her head. After the ceremony the bride has to be sat yet again for this garment from a wedding cake used in Moravian wedding. On a wedding day, an animal was sacrificed. This animal was a cockerel, a symbol of sexuality, masculinity, an image, a symbol that appeared in my work quite often. This animal was led on a meadow on the day of wedding by two young bridesmaids. The groom had his eyes tied and had to chop a head off this cockerel as part of a ritual.
This work was produced in 2009. And it is part of a work called Spring Equinox. It was the first time I have uh, worked with performers outside of a studio space. As I felt, very, as I felt, it's it is very important to step aside of of the room of the city and work within the nature. When I was asked, when I was invited to stage a live performance here in Oslo, I, uh, instantly started to look into the depth of traditional Norwegian folklore. And I'm a, I came across the Brudekrone. ordered a book and these images look extremely interesting for what I was planning to do. said that the Norwegian, Norwegian bride wearing such costume had to have many and many decorations, mostly gold decorations, to ensure fertility in her future life. It was the fascination of the gold that struck me. As in my previous work, I've used 
lot of gold. And so it was very symbolic to the work. I was always in, intrigued by the origins of those traditions and rituals. It was these pagan, old pagan traditions that interested me. The way people used to live and the way People used to perform their rituals within the nature. to make sure that the soil will be strong for the next year and fertile. 